What's good guys, we're back at it again with another video. As you can see by the title today, we have my sophomore year story. I'm not gonna do a lot of long talk. We're gonna jump right into it. Quick little recap first though. My freshman year, you know, a lot of ups and downs. I was supposed to redshirt, then all of a sudden I'm not redshirting. I end up getting some minutes. Right when I'm about to start getting a lot more minutes, break my hand in practice, then I'm out four to six weeks, right? Towards the end of the year, I started to feel this little pain in my shin. We go to the doctor at the end of the year after the season because I wanted to be big macho man, you know, and play through my injuries because I had already been hurt before. Go to the doctor, walk in there, get my little x-ray. He comes in there and he tells me, you have something called a dreaded black line. And this could have been a Kevin Ware situation. So when he said that, I was kind of taken aback, like Kevin Ware, if you guys don't know who that is, Kevin Ware is the Louisville basketball player who I think it was, it was a while ago, a lot of years ago, in the NCAA tournament, broke his tibia, broke his leg on live television. I was watching and it was a compound fracture. What that means is his actual bone was exposed to open air. I'm pretty sure if you guys saw it, like you saw the pictures, it was looking crazy. My doctor told me if I would have, again, tried to be tough and tough it out and not tell my coaches and not do anything about it, if I would have kept playing a couple more weeks, that was for sure going to happen to me because I had something called a dreaded black line, right? So with a regular fracture, it's just a little small sliver that you can see going into the bone and that's like a little stress fracture, right? Mine went from that little small sliver of a stress fracture to a full black line like inside the bone that you can see. So again, if I would have jumped and landed the wrong way or cut the wrong way, my leg literally, literally could have snapped. And so the doctor then says, you know, you don't need surgery in two weeks or a week. I need a surgery ASAP within those next couple of days. So instantly in my head, I'm kind of sitting on the table like, bro, you got to be kidding me. Again, you guys got to remember, broke my foot twice in the same spot. My senior year of high school, I get to college. I'm supposed to red shirt, then I'm not. Then I break my hand. Now I have to have a major surgery. They're telling me they have to put a titanium rod in my left leg a titanium rod in my left leg and it has to happen ASAP. So it was kind of like a whirlwind at that point. Everything happened so fast. I won't get too much into the details of the surgery, of course, but I will say like they had to get a custom made titanium rod because my tibia is really long, of course, and like actually like hammer it down into the bone. Uh, if you guys want to see the pictures of, you know, how my leg looked afterwards, go check out my uh, injury video, on my basketball advice playlist. But I just remember like specifically laying in my bed after the surgery, couldn't feel my left leg at all. They gave me something, I think it's called an epidural to even perform the surgery. And my leg was numb for like two, three days after that. Couldn't feel it at all. Couldn't walk. My mom got to help me go to the bathroom. And I'm laying in the bed like, bro, your career might be over with. Your coaches might be saying, yeah, B, we support you. We can't wait for you to get back. But I know they're in their meetings, like up in the offices, like, yeah, we can't trust this kid. He keeps getting hurt. Like he's a waste of the scholarship. Not to mention the head coach that I had committed to actually ended up leaving for another job. And this is a big thing that I also wanted to talk about in this video. When you make a decision to go to a school, make sure you talk to that coach about what his timeline is, about how long he plans on being at a certain school. Because like I said, I committed to one coach. After my freshman year, that coach decided to leave and take a better job. So at the time where I'm laying in the bed, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if I'm even going to be able to play anymore. Now I have a new head coach. Luckily for me, it was, you know, an assistant that got promoted. But I was also stressing at the same time, like, shoot, like, is he even, am I even going to be a part of his system? Because I committed to this head coach and he was telling me he had a spot for me, his vision for me. What is the, you know, what is this new head coach vision for me? Again, like, this is everything I'm thinking about as I'm laying in that bed, like really didn't know what was going to happen. I'm also thinking crazy stuff like, man, I'm setting off every single metal alarm in the airport. I'm not going to be able to go. Like I'm half cyborg. I got titanium rod in this leg. I got a pin in this foot. Like, I don't know what I'm about to do. My whole body jacked up. I'm thinking through all of this. Rehab starts. And remember what I told you guys about college, you know, college sports in general, what that rehab training process is like, or even if you get hurt at all, any extremity that isn't hurt, you're going to be working. So I had a rod in my leg. I'm recovering from that. I'm at practices on the bike, straight arms, miles. I had to do miles on the bike all arms, all arms. And keep in mind, my recovery period was four to six months. So that's how long I was doing that uh, rehab. We did obviously a lot of, you know, isolation work for this specific leg while also making sure my other leg doesn't get too strong to keep a balance between the two legs. I'll tell you guys this quick story. I learned how to swim because of this. Uh, my trainer was like, yeah, let's go to the pool. Let's do a pool workout, obviously for rehab. 
She's like, you know how to swim. And instantly I just go, yeah, 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 yeah. I did not know how to swim at all. We go to the pool. She's like, yeah, just do, just do a lap, like down and back. Like just do a lap down and back. And I'm like, yeah, all right. But you know how pools are. It starts off shallow, then it gets really deep. But this was a college, a college pool. So it gets really, really deep. So I'm like, I get about halfway and I see that drop and I turn around. I'm like, yeah, I was, I was joking. Like I, I can't really swim. So I just had to do like half laps. I was doing that until I Googled, you know, went on YouTube, looked up swimming for dummies. And, you know, after that, I was a young Michael Phelps out there. So that's where I did a lot of my rehab in the pool, swimming, running. It was good, you know, get back in shape, get this weight off without putting a lot of pressure on my legs. So I was in the pool for a lot of my rehab. Obviously, by this point, the season had already started. So I think I made it back by early December. It was either the Colgate game or the Kaiser game. But that Kaiser game specifically there's a video on this channel that says, you know, my worst game ever. That was that game because I tried to put one leg sleeve on my hurt leg and I thought I would look good and I thought, shoot, it's my hurt leg and I don't care if I'm a big, I'm going to just wear one leg sleeve anyway. It ended up being the worst game I've ever played in my life. Like, go check it out if you haven't seen it, but that game was, was terrible. After that, though, I ain't going to lie, my confidence took a hit and then it took maybe about two or three more games after that before I actually got into some type of game shape you know, my legs kind of got back under me, but at the same time, something weird was happening, right? Um, year before, I told you guys I shot 70% from the free throw line. When I came back in early December from my injury, four to six months out, all of a sudden I started that season 0 for 7 from the free throw line. I remember we're on the bus to an away game and my teammates are like, you know, you're shooting worse than Taco Fall from the free throw line. This is when Taco was still at UCF. And at the time, I'm trying to play it off, ah, ha, 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 whatever. But in the back of my head, I'm like, you what? Oh, yeah, something got to change. And that was the worst thing I ever could have did. I know they tell you don't do this, but I actually scrapped my entire routine. I think I started doing something I was doing back in high school because I was 0 for 7. I was trying to do anything I could to try and find a way to make a free throw. I won't get too far into it because I talked about it on my mental health of student athlete videos also on the channel, but it really got to a point where it's affecting me off the court. Like I would have good games because at the same time when I'm struggling with free throws, I'm doing stuff like this, bodies, bodies. I'm playing extremely well at the same time, except for the free throw. So it's kind of messing with my head and there would be times where kind of like when I was younger and I would be scared to catch the ball because I didn't want to drop it. So I would hide behind defenders. There will be times in the game where I'm like, oh, should I not go up here because he might foul me? And, you know, I might have to go to the free throw line and I definitely don't want to do that. But everything that was going on was like really affecting like my mental, like really. And I really felt stressed a lot of days, like because all I was thinking about was how can I make free throws? I'm coming in in the morning at 6 a.m. and I'm shooting. I'm telling you, I, people, I've told people this for some reason. They think I was lying. You can ask Coach Joey. Cantens, who was in the gym with me that day and Coach Marsh, I was shot like 94 for 100. And I'm coming in in the mornings doing this consistently. But when I get in that game, because you cannot simulate when the popcorn's popping, when I get in that game, I just kept, I cannot shoot a free throw to save my life. So like I was saying, it was really weighing on me. So I started looking for, you know, outlets for my stress. And this is where I started to go out a lot more and go to parties and things like that. Just anything to honestly to get my mind off of what's happening on the court. I really cannot make a free throw to save my life. Remember what I've said in my other videos by this point in my sophomore year, I'm a starter. Even though I'm struggling with my free throws and things like that, I'm still a starter. So when I am going out, I'm getting all this attention like the school was using me for social media posts posters, all that. So even though I'm struggling internally, mentally, outwardly, I'm getting all this attention. Like I said, I'm still dunking on a couple people. So I still kind of feel good about myself in that way. And when I go out, I'm getting attention. So I feel good there. So that's where, honestly, we're going to be honest. That's where my focus started to move towards. At the time, I probably was like, no, I'm still focused on, I'm going to make these free throws. But subconsciously, my focus was starting to shift towards going out in the extracurriculars. I'm going to be honest, I'll even tell myself a little bit, like there will be times where, you know, especially at the height of my free throw struggles, where I would have a good game. Like I had, I had a game when I had 12 and seven, but I missed two free throws and I was sitting in my, you know, dorm room with the lights off by myself, like really struggling. Like all I was thinking about was the free throws and how you embarrassed yourself. So at a certain point, it started to turn into, okay, how can you get your mind off of that? Right now, all I can do is go out. There will be days where let's say we got a game on a Tuesday and I'm thinking, all right, what am I going to do after that game? Like, what am, where am I going to go? You know, where, where am I going to go out that night? Or 
you know, we get back from an away game, uh, we get back from an away game on a Saturday at maybe 1030 and I'm going straight from the bus to the apartment to get ready and I'm going straight out. Like there would be, we being honest here, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna keep it a hundred. And at the time, those didn't seem like big decisions for me. Like, yeah, we just played a game. Like, like I said, I've, I've been stressed and I need somewhere, I need something to do. So let me just go out. But those decisions were just opening the door for other decisions that I would make, you know, later on down the line in my junior year that ended up, you know, affecting my career completely. The rest of my sophomore year, you know, I had good performances, I had bad performances, but one thing that was always consistently bad them free throws i never ended up getting over it and i actually ended up started going out more and more and more season ends we uh lose first round of the conference tournament of course you know i put a part of that on me because now looking back on it i wasn't focused at all like my mental was just gone by that point so the season ends and a normal focused basketball player would think okay your free throw percentage went from 70 percent your freshman year to 25 percent so that's a really big drop. Something happened. All right, what happened to make your free throw percentage drop? Let's get in the gym. Let's work. You get hurt a lot. Let's focus a lot on your body so you can get a full season of no injuries, things like that. Of course, like I said, by this point, though, I was going out a lot. Like that was a lot of my focus was, OK, where am I going? Like I'm going here. I'm doing that. I'm doing this. We have our little two weeks off and then we start off season workouts. And I forgot to say this. So probably around late January, early February, I started to feel like a similar twinge in my left tibia. I did say something and, you know, they were saying like, it's probably just the soreness. Obviously you just had surgery. It's not going to be a hundred percent. That's a lot of what I was hearing. You're not going to be a hundred percent, but you know, still keep pushing, still keep pushing. Um, we start off season workouts and I'm hooping, right? So this, I probably got about a week out of off season workouts in which I really felt like I had made a jump in terms of I'm starting to shoot jumpers in practice. Um, you know, I'm putting it down. I'm driving like I'm doing everything. Like I think this next year I'm about to make a jump. Free throws, we're going to be able to figure it out because my confidence was getting higher because I was starting to realize like you might be a bucket for real. Start to feel the twins again. But this time I'm like, all right, let's say something again. It's the off season. We'll just go get it checked out. Right. Get to the doctor. We get another x-ray. Turns out that, um, my tibia, the fracture, never actually fully healed. So when I was playing, when I came back, you know, I was playing that year, you know, granted the, the rod was in there, but the actual fracture had not healed yet. From that point on, I was shut down for the rest of the summer up until the next season, like, because they wanted to make sure that I fully got it healed so it didn't snap at some point and I'll become a Kevin Ware situation. And at the time, honestly, like I was blaming coaching staff, the trainers, like how y'all gonna let me come back and how y'all gonna tell me to keep pushing when it was never really healed in the first place. But now looking back on it, I don't put as much blame on them because I should have known like, bro, you were just out four to six months and you want to go out, you know, every other night and do this, this and that when you should be in, in bed, letting your bone and rod rest like you want to do all of this which isn't helping your body recover you want to do all that instead of actually like chill at the crib and actually get healthy so i don't blame them as much anymore a lot of it was on me but remember what i said all of those decisions like even for you guys every decision you make it might not seem like a big one at the time there's a consequence to everything whether that be positive or negative you just might not see it in the moment. So for me, a lot of where I started to see those consequences was in my junior year. That's going to be the next one. I appreciate you guys watching. Like, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications. Remember, if you want the one-on-one -on -one evaluations or the breakdowns that go on the channel, hit my website in the description. Also, if you have any questions for me or need any advice from me, also hit the link for Noodle in the description. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Again, I appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you guys next time with the next video.